Coming up on Varsity Sports, some of the best football games we've seen all season took place last week. We've got the highlights and post-game reactions. The playoffs are just around the corner, and we are going to give you everything you need to know to get ready, including some potential first-round sleepers. You want 300-yard rushers? Well, we got them. The spotlight last week's star performers in the premier play. The pigskin pick'em contest couldn't get much closer. Get a look at our picks for the best games of the upcoming weeks, next on Varsity Sports. And how's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson. He's Jason and Dara. Some teams have already wrapped up the regular season, while others have one game remaining. But one thing's for certain, everyone has playoff fever. I know I do. Get you ready for another big week of high school football. Yeah, some amazing games last week mm -hmm. uh, in particular. We saw Fargo Davies and Fargo South put up 99 points on the board. <laughs> it's just um, nuts. We've seen a, a last-minute pick six in South Dakota decide a game. And it's just a warm-up for what we're going to see in these next couple of weeks as we start deciding champions in less than three weeks. Yep, a lot of good football still to be played in North and South Dakota, that's for sure. What a week, as you just mentioned, in high school football in South Dakota. Two perennial contenders match up with perfect rec records in the nine-man ranks while Yankton looked to lock up the ESD and clinch the number one spot in Class 11 AA. But we start in Sioux Falls, where the four high schools got one last look at each other before the playoffs. And let's get into our Varsity Sports South Dakota Rewind. Top-ranked Lincoln filed its first shutout of the season. Lincoln Crosstown rival Washington 24-0. Patriots, who didn't even allow Washington into their territory until the second half, scored all three of their touchdowns from the arm of Isaiah Roach, who was 20-29 for 226 yards. One bright spot for the Warriors in this one. The defense did hold the Lincoln running game in check, allowing just 51 yards on the ground, but that wasn't nearly enough. Pats finished the regular season at 8-0. At McEnany Field, O'Gorman took a 21-7 lead at the half against Roosevelt but they couldn't hang on. The Riders went to the ground game and plowed their way down the field to tie the game in the fourth quarter. Then it was Justin Mueller who broke the deadlock with this 62-yard interception return, giving Roosevelt the 28-21 win. Jake Bear and Jet Thune combined to run 46 times for 245 yards on the night. The game and we kind of put it on our linemen, especially because they were pushing us around a little bit up front. And I thought our offensive line, it was really big to come out in the third quarter and drive uh, and score to start the second half. Our coaches, we prepared so much and they just, they know where to put us in the right spot. And it's really, I'm just so grateful that our coaches, we all watched so much film and they got me in the right spot to make a play and I just made the play. Yankton reached a couple of important milestones on Friday, clinching an undefeated regular season, the outright ESD title, and the number one seed for the 11AA playoffs with a 31-8 thumping of Harrisburg. Bucks defense forced four turnovers, while quarterback Mason Strahl threw for 193 yards and two scores. That team, Jason, is rolling at the right time. Yes, they are in the ESD. Brandon Valley got their top target. Alex Wilde involved in a big way as the Lynx beat Pierre 48-27. Wilde caught seven passes just in that first half, two for touchdowns, and finished the night with eight catches, 123 yards, and three scores. Jake Como was 20 of 28, 220 yards, while running back Riley Franson added 131 yards on the ground in the win. Big performances out of their start. Yeah, tough to find a more efficient quarterback in high school football in South Dakota than Jake Como. All right, well, Howard Canastota locked up in a battle of unbeaten nine-man teams, and Luke Loudenberg had a typical day at the office with 236 yards and five touchdowns to lead the Tigers to their seventh win of the season, 52-12. Loudenberg now has 5,699 career rushing yards leaving him just 311 shy of the state record. Oh, we knew we had to come out and play physical against these guys. We knew the more physical team was going to win this game, so we had to get out and get on them right away and stay on them the whole game. We knew they were big and we knew they were fast, and so we had to, we aren't real big, so we had to match their, uh, their size with our speed and our uh, physicality, and that's what we did. Riley Schmidt had another big week for Del Rapids. He ran for 196 yards and two touchdowns for the Quarriers as they beat Tri-Valley 27-7. to 
Del Rapids now has won six in a row after dropping their opening season game to Madison. Yeah, another team hitting its stride at the right time. Madison Bulldogs use their ground game to roll up 243 yards and a 25-6 win in Vermillion on Friday. The Bulldogs likely sewed up the number one seed in the 11-8 playoffs with that win. All right, well, later on, we'll look back at some of last week's top individual performances. But up next, we'll recap Saturday's action in North Dakota, which included a 99-point game in Fargo. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And welcome back. Well, they saved a lot of football for Saturday in North Dakota last week, and a couple of contests proved well worth the wait, especially the EDC showdown between Fargo South and Davies. And that's where we begin with our North Dakota Rewind. Doesn't get much crazier than this, Jason. The Eagles ran 84 plays compared to South's 41 on Saturday. They won the time of possession battle by over a two to one ratio but they didn't lead in this game until Aiden Hartness converted this PAT to go up 50-49 with 54 seconds left. A personal foul gave South a second crack at a game-winning field goal, but the 35-yard attempt was blocked by Davies, giving the Eagles a wild second one-point win in as many weeks, 50 to 49. I can't stress how, how great that game was. It was <laughs> one of the best uh, that I've heard in a long time. Let's move to Bismarck. When Bismarck and Century get together, there's usually a WDA title on the line. No different in this one, but it was a 54-13 win by De the Demons that secured their conference title once again. Now the BHS ground game gained nearly 500 yards. Jackson Ford turned in another impressive performance to say the least with 297 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. Century could still, however, get that number two seed in the playoffs if they beat Williston in their regular season finale on Friday. West Fargo bounced back from their only EDC loss with a dominant performance against Devils Lake. The Packers defense was awfully stingy, surrendering just 50 total yards, six of them on the ground in a 41-0 shutout of the Firebirds. That's yeah, gonna be a good one next week, West Fargo and Fargo South. Valley City had hopes of surprising Shanley, but it didn't happen. The Deacons disposed of the Highliners 40-13 to behind another strong performance from their running game. All right, well, the postseason officially kicks off for Class A and nine-man teams in North Dakota on Saturday. And when we come back, we'll take a look at those respective playoff pictures. You're watching Varsity Sports. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Well, the first postseason games in the Dakotas are slated for this Saturday with North Dakota nine man and class A teams beginning their respective treks toward the Dakota Bowl. And Jason, as we take a look at the first round matchup, starting with nine man, any surprises that jump out at you? Well, I mean, all these teams are playoff teams, so it wouldn't be a huge surprise, but there are some four seeds that I think have a chance, and one of those is North Star. And it's because they've got Jaden Kamrowski. This guy has been passing for 228 yards per game, and he's got his favorite target, Alex Weston. He's got 55 catches at the wow. nine-man level with 12 touchdowns, but they got to go through a very tough Lamar LM team who's just slipped up one time, and they've got a really good back in Anthony Olsen, so it's going to be a tough task but I think that's one team you can point to that might be able to do it. Richland at Hatton Northwood is another one that you're interested in. Yeah, I mean, just two years ago, the Hatton Northwood Thunder team didn't even win a game, a single wow. game. And now uh, last year they progressed to the playoffs, got beat by South Florida. This year, you see them progressing maybe even one more level. Uh, Richland, a tough team to play right off the bat, but that's a team that's to watch out for. Some good ones in the lower half here. St. John at Richardson Taylor Hebron. Divide County at Shiloh Christian. Yeah, St. John has had a great season. Just the one slip up for them as well. Their quarterback, Seth Vivier, 32 touchdown passes. So another nine-man team that loves to pass the ball. 242 yards and average per game passing. Uh, but Richardson Taylor Hebron, they get it done on the ground in Denver Colgrove. And Jaden Schmidt, uh, that's where you make your money in the playoffs is on the that's ground. True. And I think, I yep. think the, the Raiders are going to be looking for a tough win there. 
Shiloh Christian, uh, just quickly on them. This oh. is a team that's been impressive from the word go this season. Talk about teams taking that step up. Last year went undefeated in the regular season. This year haven't been competitive in the second half because they've had such large leads. You look at A.J. Dale and Blake Emmel, just great guys to hand the ball off to. And Zach Martin has really become a dual-threat quarterback for them. Uh, that's a team that really could make their way all the way to the finals and maybe, maybe give Cavalier a, a game. All of these games on this list, by the way, started uh, slated for 2 o'clock uh, on Saturday yep. uh, in the nine-man ranks. All right, let's move on to Class 8 now. A lot of good teams, including Oaks, Rugby, Hazen, all of which are unbeaten. Mm -hmm. uh, but which of these teams do you think uh, has the most difficult road to hoe ahead. Yeah, undefeated season doesn't mean an automatic ticket to the Dakota Bowl. Right. And you see two on the bottom half here, Rugby and Hazen. Of course, Hazen with, what, 28 wins in a row? I hope I have that right. They're going to be tough to unseat. They've beaten some good teams throughout the season. That's the only reason I think Rugby is going to struggle. They've got a great quarterback, though, in Brad Heidelbaugh. He, we've seen him do it on the court yep. uh, during the winter. But on the fall, 1,100 yards, eight touchdown passes, plus 729 yards rushing with 14 touchdowns. But uh, that's going to be tough for them to make it all the way through. You look on the top half where you've got Oaks, a team that's gone undefeated, just got done beating a good uh, Carrington team to get to this point. They've got a great combination with their quarterback, uh, Bryce Meal, 1,200 yards passing, 16 touchdowns, and Eric Lepp almost at 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns rush. So a lot of good teams in this class, but it's going to be tough for run. It absolutely is. Uh, but uh, again, a lot of great games. All of these that you see here slated again for 2 o'clock uh, on Saturday. So some matinees out there. Get out and uh, catch a high school football game. There's going to be a lot of good ones out across the state of North Dakota this weekend. All right, well, our picks for some of this week's top matchups coming up in a bit. But coming up next, we'll unveil the latest batch of Jandy-approved plays. Find out where this one ranks. When we come back. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And hey, welcome back. Well, we've taken a look back at what some of the top teams from North and South Dakota have done uh, over the course of the last week, but always fun to uh, Put the spotlight at some of the top performances, yeah. some of the top individual performances uh, from the week that was as well. And here are a few that really stand out to us, starting at South Dakota, Jason. Uh, let's go Cody Bustle from West Central. Yeah, I mean, West Central only played one half of football and won by the mercy rule against Millbank. Cody Bustle ran it eight times, 193 yards, <laughs> and three touchdowns. That's a nice way to start it off. And then also in that class, in 11A, you've got Lennox and John Oldenkamp put up a huge performance to get the upset over T. He put up 173 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. That's a good win for, for that Oriole team. It's a program that you could tell is, is getting They're better. They're getting better. And, and wins like this uh, really prove that. That's right. And then we talk about the AAA class. You look at what Brandon Valley has been doing lately, and it's because of what Jake Como and Alex Wilde did, especially in that first half. Wilde was seven catches in the first half, 123 in for the whole game, and three touchdowns. But Como, 220 yards passing, four touchdowns, also ran two touchdowns in that game. And, oh, by the way, Riley Franson put in 131 and a touchdown as well. well we've talked about it before. Jake Cobo just, I mean, the guy is extremely accurate for a high school quarterback. Yep. Uh, He's really cut know, down they, on the interceptions. And they, and they do put him in positions uh, to complete passes. They yes. don't. They, a lot of times it's a lot of short stuff that's easier to hit. But uh, he, he runs that offense very, very well. Uh, and is, is an awfully, awfully good football player. Yes. In North Dakota, it was really all about the ground game. Some huge mm -hmm. rushing performances across the state on Saturday. Yeah, we get to this time of the year, and the ground game seems to get even more important, especially in North mm -hmm. Dakota where the weather really turns. And to James Johannesson, he got fed the ball 20 times. He turned that into 359 yards and six touchdowns. He literally could not be stopped. Great job by Johannesson, and he'll credit his offensive line. They did a great job as well. And they lost. And they lost. That's what's amazing about well, that. Well, we didn't mention this in the other part, but they kicked away. From, they did a two onside kicks to keep the ball away from James Johannesson, and Davies converted on those kicks. <laughs> so it was a total, total play to keep the ball out of his hands, and a huge day for Johannesson. But also, almost 300 yards for Jackson Ford on the day, 297 yards rushing, three touchdowns. And Malik Larimer out of Thompson also put a 300-yard wow. rushing day together. 19 carries, 328 yards, and six scores for him. 
Yeah. There's other 200-yard-plus players you see on this list. A lot of great rushing performances last week. Yeah, congratulations to all those guys for uh, what was a tremendous individual weekend, week. uh, both in South Dakota and North Dakota. Well, those lists are about what guys did over the course of yes. the entire, day, uh, entire game, but it only takes one play to make this next list. Uh, the only catch is that uh, play has to be great. At and least has to in, be approved. In the eyes of this guy. <laughs> anyway, right. with that, it's time for another edition of Jandy Approved Plays of the Week. Yeah, we'll start it out at Howard Wood Field where Nickel Myers routinely makes an appearance. This one falling oh. down, makes the catch, and secures the ball for the six points. Probably the best receiver in the state of South Dakota right Roach there. does a very good job of putting it where he can go and get it, too. Well, just as I say that, another great receiver in South Dakota, Alex Wilde, keeps his feet in, and look how high he goes up for this ball. He has had some huge nights throughout this season. He had 70 catches earlier in the season. He he's, a, he's a player. Now, speaking of players, Evan Greenway hits the tip ball and gets the interception, uses all of his length of that 6'8 frame to go out wow. and get that interception. Really athletic play. Another great defensive play. This one was important. This is tied at this point. Justin Mueller reads the, the pick and takes it back for a pick six. That gave Roosevelt the lead and the win. Second time this season that we've seen a game a crazy game decided on a pick six. Brad of Valley Brooklyn that way. Well. Now the last few minutes you see Aiden Hartness. Nobody was going to stop him on this two-point conversion. That was their first lead of the game. Great play by Aiden Hartness. Only upstage by J.D. Argulis, who comes in on the blocked field goal and saves the game for Fargo Davies. What a way to win this game. That was, yeah, I don't know that you're ever going to find a crazier high school football game than the one those people in Fargo got treated to. And he did that against probably the best kicker in the state for Fargo South. Great job by Davies to secure that victory. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the uh, final week of the regular season features a handful of matchups that are awfully tough to predict. Uh, but Jenny and I are, are we're gonna Give try. Give a shot. Yeah, we're gonna try. Well, we'll wrap things up with another round of Varsity Sports Pigskin Pick'em next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And hey, welcome back to Varsity Sports. Jay Elson, Jason, and Air wrapping things up tonight as we do each and every week here on the program with another round of Varsity Sports Pigskin Pick'em. It's been a fun contest between Jason and I all season long. Upsets continue to be the difference. Yeah, if you want to see into the future, stay tuned here for four <laughs> minutes. He's been nailing the upset picks left uh, and right, so uh, we'll see how we do this week, Jay. Yeah, your level of frustration with that has been off the charts, I might add. Now, Trying my best. but we'll, we'll get to those in a bit. Let's pick four games first. Two from North Dakota, two from South Dakota, starting in Class 3A in North Dakota. Good one in the EDC is West Fargo makes the trip to Fargo South. Yeah, Fargo South's offense is the unstoppable force, but West Fargo's defense is the immovable object. Mm. If you like physics, you know that these two are, it's its a tough battle when you got a great defense going against a great offense, and West Fargo's defense has been phenomenal. They are have allowed less than half the points of the number two defense wow. in the EDC. They are very good, only giving up 21 points over their last five games, but Fargo South's offense I mean, they are on fire. 45-plus points in their last five games. When they get the ball, they'll find a way to score. I think they get it done. And I think South's going to be playing with a little bit of an edge this week after losing that game at Davies after leading until the, the final minute game, of the yeah. game. And so uh, Johannes and Brooks and company, I think they get it done. Uh, close the regular season at 8-1. and one. In Class 2A, Bishop Ryan comes it off their first loss of the season. Now they've got to go take out a very tough St. Mary's team. Yeah, that's a tough recipe. At the end of the season, having to play Beulah and then St. Mary's, it's going to be tough for the Lions to get this one done. The St. Mary's uh, team has been awesome, putting up 40-plus points in their last six games. They've got the running game going, going with the Saints. Well, you want to talk about defenses. You mentioned West Fargo in AAA. Well, it doesn't get a whole lot better than St. Mary's defense in AA. True. So I like the Saints uh, for that reason alone. I think they've got enough offense, obviously, to supplement that as well. Uh, I look for them to win pretty comfortably uh, in this game. In South Dakota now, Class 11 AAA AA showdown, an ESD affair as Brandon Valley makes the short trip to Harrisburg. Yeah, in this conference game, you've got a divided highway. Brandon Valley going one way, Harrisburg going the other. Brandon mm -hmm. started off the year 1-2 and two and are now up to 5-2, and two, four wins in a row. Harrisburg, on the other hand, three losses in a row, and the Brandon Valley offense is 
really good. And their defense, you look at them, they've given up 20 plus points in almost every game this year except for one. That's because they run so many plays that the other team has a chance to put up some uh, numbers on the board too, but I'm still taking the Lynx. Yeah, I, I think the Lynx are, are, are kind of hitting a stride here. You know, as you said, recover from that one and two start. Harrisburg is kind of headed in the wrong direction. Granted, they played an extremely difficult schedule down the stretch. Yeah, they have. But with that, I think we've learned that they're not quite there yet as far as maybe being a legitimate championship contender. Uh, I like Brandon Valley uh, to get the win in this one. Finally, we close with the Southern Hills Showdown. A battle out west between Custer 7-0 at Hot Springs 5-2. Custer has got to be the quietest 7-0 team I've ever seen. Don't have them in my rankings in 11B. Uh, and they do it running. Last year they did it throwing the ball with Chase Glacier. This year they've been running the ball with Joel Thompson. Uh, he's put up 729 yards and 11 touchdowns. But that won't be enough against a good Hot Springs team. Uh, Jared Harkless, great job. Trey Nocdago throwing the ball. I think uh, the Bison get it done. Yeah, Hot Springs, much tougher schedule if you look yes. at it. Um, their losses are to St. Thomas Moore and to a much improved Douglas teams uh, team. But then you, you you go down the list and you know, wins over Spearfish Sturgis schools yeah. that don't have great records, but they're bigger schools. So you just just based on that, you can you can draw a, a little bit more out of their five and yep. two record maybe I think than you can out of the seven zero record uh, of Custer. So I like Hot Springs as well. Finally, quickly, our upset picks of the week. You know what? Dickinson's a team on the way up. They play against Minot, a team that doesn't have as much to play for. They're going to get either the third or the fourth spot in the rankings. Uh, Dickinson could go all the way up to the number two spot. I think that gives them enough motivation to get the upset. Oh, okay. I like uh, in the nine-man ranks, uh, a North Dakota game. Tough to call these these first-round matchups because you've got these, these regions combining, and they don't play outside their region during the regular season. Right. So you're never sure which region really is better. I, that being said, I think Region 3 was pretty strong. Uh, top to bottom this year. And I like St. John's to go on the road and beat Richardson Taylor Hebron. Uh, St. John beat TGU, which is the number one team in their yeah. region this year. So uh, I think that, that's about the only really sound reasoning I have, but I like the Woodchucks okay. uh, to get the win and hopefully, hopefully continue my upset streak.